नमस्ते जय हिंद एंड वेलकम टू टेक थ्री यू नो वाई वी कॉलिंग इट टेक थ्री जाकर जेकब मैनेजिंग एडिटर सी एन एन न्यूज एटीन राहुल शिवशंकर कंसल्टिंग एडिटर न्यूज एटीन नेटवर्क एंड योर स्टोरी लेट्स ट्राई एंड ब्रेक डाउन टू और थ्री स्टोरीज दैट्स द आइडिया ऑफ दिस कॉन्वर्जेशन दैट बिहाइंड द सीन्स वॉट वी थिंक हियर ऑन द नेटवर्क ऑन द चैनल ऑफ सम ऑफ द बिगर डेवलपमेंट्स एंड पिक वन और टू ऑफ दीज एंड देन have a given go that's the whole thought process ladies and gentlemen it's not going to be a fiery debate but it's going to be intense because you will get perspectives and uh, but nothing which is devoid of facts that's the commitment that we are trying to make zakha jacob which are the two issues that you'd like to pick up this time well certainly i think given um, uh, what the israelis have managed to do in the space of 24 hours uh, first take out ismail haniya and then take out mohammad daif uh, and waiting for two weeks to to confirm that I think there's a larger story at play which we'll get to but I think the more important story is Kashmir. I think given what we're seeing, you know, the number of attacks that we've seen in Jammu, mm. uh, next week is going to be by the way the 5th anniversary of uh, August 5th 2019 yes. the abrogation of article 370. So what's changed, what's not changed and ultimately all of it, it will lead up to, you know, can they conduct elections or not. So I think right. these two. Let's address Jammu and Kashmir because you've got some Kashmiri roots and the and the and we may have differing points we've just got a development where the election commission of india has also asked these states including maharashtra haryana uh, and also jammu and kashmir the union territory out of the four which are supposed to go to polls that tell us get us your electoral rolls elections are going to happen soon you think the timing is right no not at all anand i i look you know i'm not <coughs> somebody who's anti democracy and i do believe that political rights must be returned to the kashmiris but at this moment in time anand i personally don't believe that kashmir is ready for a full fledged political process to roll out i think we need to start looking at kashmir a little differently out of the box a little bit mm -hmm. i don't think you know the standard conventional wisdom is that if a political process gets underway everything will be okay uh but let's look a little deeper three points i want to make very quickly i don't think in the near term what kashmir requires is democracy or any form of competitive politics the reason i'm saying this is because the problem there has undergone a change over the last 20 25 years mm. the central issue is no longer about self determination the cause that people are agitating or supposedly empathizing with is an imported project it's a pan islamist project the idea is to create an islamic haven in kashmir the people who are bringing terror to kashmir are fighting under the banner of islam the groups themselves are called yeah. jaish e mohammed or lashkar e toiba etc etc and from the little we are gleaning there seems to be sympathy The reason I'm saying this and it's not just me the former chief minister of Jammu and Kashmir has referred to the term Islamic wave yeah. and he's referred to it in the backdrop of the Lok Sabha elections this is not a question about if it is now a question of when mm -hmm. are we going to get completely submerged by this wave and you already have Rashid engineer who's a pan islamist he is a supporter of Pakistan the idea behind pakistan he has thrown in his lot many times with pakistan luckily he's in jail otherwise he'd be sitting in parliament now a competitive process where political parties already beginning to see that this particular rhetoric that we must bring back article 370 that we must align ourselves with a larger cause which is a pan islamic cause i mean look at the number of rallies for palestine for example that have taken place in kashmir and have had to be sort of you know stopped the targeted killings of hindus and so and so forth it, there is obviously resonance there hmm. and all it takes in a competitive hyper competitive environment is for people to fan that see they, they are also talking to jamaat e islami uh, the fountain head of all terror in that region and all of this pan islamist narrative yeah, i have actually say. tweeted against it i didn't want to bring it on because yeah. uh it's not confirmed the jamaat e islami jammu and kashmir has actually come out and you should a statement suggesting that they're in talks with the center i hope no, to god that see, this is in the case because it was banned in 2019 the point is rahul see uh, there is a thought process which says that they need to get everybody on board 
are on the democracy wagon so that they you know there can be a showcase to the world saying that peace is back in jammu and kashmir we brought how democracy how did it go for kashmir no, no. for the last 45 years Correct. is exactly what we've been doing but the, uh, that that's one point of view i'm not saying that uh, people agree to that point of view or not but that realize that is there because somewhere do you feel that bharat feels compelled zaka to show to the world no, that I they've don't got think kashmir so. under in, control in fact, no no look I, i think we are a constitutional republic we are an electoral republic to say that participative democracy uh, will not uh you know is not the solution to to a, a, a political problem i i just don't get it i mean the fact that engineer rashid defeated omar abdullah cannot be your case against participative democracy that makes no sense that's a failure of omar abdullah and his politics of course but to say that you know shun elector elections just because a, a radical got elected so in punjab you have two radicals you have the son of the chappy who killed indira gandhi so what you cancel elections in punjab i i think that's a very reductive argument i think ultimately yes i'm not i'm not denying the 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 undertones of pan islamism as far as what is happening in kashmir but i don't think the answer to that is to is to not have democracy is to not have participative no, democracy i only said that and i injected a caveat i'm not against that but i don't think the situation right now but when is, is the situation no, I, I, so it's been 5 years so you made a very interesting point right now you said that uh, it's omar abdullah's fault that he could not oh, convince politics, the people yeah. so now omar abdullah suddenly realized that the way to win the hearts and minds of the kashmiri people is to out talk out challenge out perform engineer rashid that's what i was trying to say i'm not against participative democracy i believe that right now with the way the situation is unleashing Which, democratic but, politics will lead to a competition to the no, bottom but then, but then rahul i'll tell you what, I'll, i'll tell you what here here is where my concern is you both have have made points where you say that yes we are all we all want elections we all want everybody to have their right to exercise their franchise but the fact is that there are elements who are tapping into this radical element which is there and this certain sense of uh, pan islamism and it's not love for the country but the other thing is that the current situation in jammu and kashmir especially jammu hmm. how is it that it's gone bad it's gone from uh, okay to bad and from bad to it's sliding towards worse in 6 months how can, how is that possible how is it that there are no heads that are rolling how is it that questions are not being asked how do you have 50 uh, fts and why are we shirking from taking punitive action this is this is something which many are not asking this question like the you israel know, model you no no of course much better than the israeli model because this is right happening in your sovereign territory because as per the parliament of bharat we have loc's sovereign indian territory anything that happens there against the interest of us we've got every right to strike and we have gone further than that with balagut so do we sit back and wait after 5 6 years let them build up let them build up let them build up that, that, that's one part the other thing is you create an atmosphere where you're trying to say oh should we actually do elections are you actually creating an atmosphere where you say no matter what we will do elections could you have not stopped a rashid engineer from fighting elections why did you allow him to fight elections when he is also in I mean, no i'm just constitutionally i'm just saying you could have created a, have you actually cracked down on all those people who are the the roots of this entire fountain head of terror or have you just done skim the surface and still now that safai abhiyan is still going on so there are a lot of questions that need to be asked that a government with that came into power and said let's go and ally with pdp paid a huge price for it by 2017 2018 came out of it abrogated 370 in 2019 how radically have you changed But things you on just ground answered your to kill this narrative see what actually had to happen you had hmm. to suspend democracy there in kashmir to abrogate article 370 yeah so the bjp had to snap ties with the pdp hmm. so you are arguing my point to make all those radical changes you had to impose central rule presidential rule to make sure that you have the playing field ready no, but rahul that was 5 years so, ago so that's so, what i'm saying now now look i mean as i'm saying i'm i'm giving you a very realist perspective on this real politic perspective no, i i don't see what is the hurry just give me 30 seconds go and go back to the kashmiri people and say now vote G- give me 30 we seconds delay, give me 5 years delay to the assembly no, no, no. We, you we waited 5 years. years no i what i am asking you is or, or what i am trying to put no, on the it's table it's not as if kashmir in many problematic times 
hasn't had a reversion no, here, to, here, here's what I'm trying to, to here, central here, rule. Here's, what I'm, trying to put on the table. Sir, here's what I'm trying to put on the table. What I'm trying to put on the table is there is a thought which is radical. There is a thought which is anti-India. There is a soch, just as there's a thought continuum which is pan-Islamist. What has actually been done on ground to kill this thought, this soch? Because till the time that thought, so so that is no not matter the how, many how many of them. Then you have to them. go to the Chinese model. Hmm. Look what they have done in Xinjiang province. I'm not talking about desecration. Hmm. I'm talking about affecting demographic change. Hmm. You can't settle 1400 Kashmiri Hindus hmm. in the valley. And we are talking about taking out the roots of pan-Islamism. It's not possible. You have to start waging a war. So are you saying till the time this uh, pan-Islam is rooted, Islamism is rooted out, yeah. Jammu and Kashmir is not ready for democracy? It's, it's, it's not ready for normalcy of the kind that will perpetuate the circumstances for holding I a free and fair election. I fundamentally disagree. I mm. fundamentally disagree. Uh, if you look at the history of, of the world, I mean, mm. whether it is in the US, whether it is in Latin America, uh, participative politics, participative democracy has always moderated the extreme. So to cite your Omar Abdullah example, I think the opposite is true. He doesn't have to compete in a race to the bottom with Engineer Rashid. He has to compete from the middle. When mm. you're in the middle, that's when you appeal to a wider cross-section. Look, look, at, look at the okay, US but, election. But, What's but, the problem for Trump? Hmm. He's at the extremes. He's appealing to the extremes and of the Republican base. He has now. to come to the center. So in much the same way, but, the, the but, but, okay. but, have what, to come no, to no, the but you look at the tone that, no, you, the, that, you, the, you, that the mainstream politicians The global doesn't. model. Yeah. Let's just take two places. So this great attempt at imposing democracy hmm. to root out a sort of pan-Islamist worldview Afghanistan, Iraq. Mm. What happened? Mm. Who's in power there? Mm. Egypt. Who's in power there today? Turkey. Mm, yeah. What is happening to Turkey? Correct. So these are six <coughs> countries, mm. and I can name two others in the neighborhood, where there is an attempt. Mm. I mean, don't forget that this business of sort of tamping down on pan-Islamism was done by Muslims themselves. Two yeah. very famous ones. Yes. One was a long-serving leader of uh, Turkey. Turkey. The yeah. other one was in Egypt. Yeah. What happened to both of them? Well, it, it did not because till the time culturally you are able to weed out or bring back the real cultural essence. And that's where one would ask the question, have you done enough? And if you've not done enough, why did you walk some people up the path of saying we are ready to conduct elections on a superficial position? That's one question. The other part is that unless you get the majority involved, unless you get the most of the silent uh, and you take this risk of taking, uh, do, uh, conducting elections in Jammu and Kashmir, will you actually know what's changed on ground? Will you actually be able to open up the lid and say, all right, how much do I still need to work on that place? So that, that's where the question is. We'll park it there. We'll see what happens in the coming days. And I'm sure this will come back on take three very soon. But for the moment, gents, with your permission, we're going to take a very short break. When we come back, it's the geopolitics, ladies I'm and gentlemen. I'm rolling up my sleeves. Stay with us. <laughs>